When I think about the guy that I hear, all I can see is my dad's face. My business has been officially valued at 25 million. Really? And they diagnosed me close to a psychopath. Do you think people are born with you? I've been convicted of multiple GBHs. I put a man in a coma and now I'm a multimillionaire and I'll answer any question. What? Why were you so violent? So I was a very angry kid. I had a very abusive dad who was an alcoholic. So the only expression we ever really showed in our family was anger. I would like go to my own room and punch myself in the head because I was just so angry. You like ever punch yourself in the face? So I was. No, I never done that. I'm 13 years old. What were you doing when you were my age? So at your age, things were starting to uh, get bad. I would just deliberately smash things, like fires, shoplift, and cause a lot of criminal damage. I'd go and smash every single bus stop window. What was he lot doing at 13? Yeah. I was playing Moshi Monsters. 13, I was playing Moshi Monsters. And then getting a bit older, drink, drugs. I'd felt powerless my whole life. And then when I got a bit stronger, I started to fight back and I got a bit of power back. A bit of significance made me feel strong. And I kind of become a little bit addicted to fighting. You know, I had an ASBO. And a year after I was expelled from school. We all have the like ability to be bad. We all have like that in us, you know what I mean? And there was one night where I was in a taxi queue and I jumped to the front of the taxi queue and skipped the queue. Didn't realise, but I was just so drunk I kind of stumbled in there. And to this day, and this is no excuse, but I just want to try and explain, to this day, when I think about the guy that I hit, all I can see is my dad's face. Right, so I know, I know that he triggered me, which is no excuse. I take full responsibility. I just snapped and just attacked him. Do you think he's crazy? Mental. Yeah. Yes. A lot of my family are actually police officers. So I've heard how maybe easy it is. As soon as you go into prison, I do feel like no matter what your crime was, how bad it was, I feel like there's a lot of, oh, are you okay? Like, is everything all right with you? How are you feeling today? People who are suffering don't get that. So why all of a sudden okay. someone who's done something okay. so terrible, you know, getting all this, this, this help from such professionals all of a sudden? But then there's well, people that need it. I can it. answer it. They do get it. It is available for people. It's yeah. not just available to convicted criminals. Like but it's, it's available. there for them as soon as they're in. Yeah, because they've traumatised. A lot of them have been raped. A lot of them have been sexually abused mm -hmm. as a child. You know, and all of use course. is a symptom that, that, that's occurred as a result of yeah. that. But these people need help. These people don't need uh, but locking need up to and be, throwing the key away. They also need to be punished, I think. And they are punished because they're sitting in a cell. I could talk about this all day. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's go, very go, much... go to prison first and then we'll talk about it. Yeah, well, well, have some trauma first I've and then we'll got, talk about it. Prison's meant to be a place where, you know, you're meant to, well, be punished. You know, you've got to treat, treat you like a prisoner and yeah. not, not someone that, you I mean, know, you've got... You're locked behind your you door for 23 hours a day, you do get treated like a prisoner, trust me. She has a good point. Yeah. Oh, no, I hear it. Yeah. Do you think you're rehabilitated? I don't think I'm rehabilitated, no. I'm not fixed and yeah. I never will be. There's a saying in uh, Narcotics Anonymous, which is yesterday's shower doesn't keep you clean today. You said you used to switch on and off with your anger. Do you think that it could possibly return? Absolutely. I'm under no illusion that I'm fixed. Do you think that you have to hit rock bottom to go to the top? I feel like I've got an upper hand on you, right? Because they say voids create values and I've always had this like <laughs> need for significance. My dad, I didn't feel like he loved me. So now I have this like huge void and I channeled it in the complete wrong areas through power and violence. Yeah. But now I've channeled it into business and like making myself the best person I can be and helping people and making yes. the world a better place to the point where it's like a compelling force that just I can't stop. So I feel awful not being able to like get the respect of your father. Yeah, because he can control how his father behaved. So it's good that he turned it into something positive at least. So what I've done is bad. But in terms of my life path and the things that I've been able to achieve has, has actually had a positive impact on the world. But I wouldn't go back and change it. You wouldn't not, go back and change it? No, I don't regret any of it. So the guy that you, that you, you hit, yeah. do you not think his life was impacted by what you did? What would you go to him, honestly? Um, I would have said sorry. Yeah. And I would have said thank you. Yeah. Because he was the last like significant thing that made me change. I regret that I've caused harm to him and his family, of course, okay. but I don't 
regret everything as a whole because otherwise I wouldn't be where I am now. You don't need like trauma and that kind of thing to be who you want to be. Because you did a lot of like violent acts that kind of affected people's families. Did you experience guilt or shame? I'll be completely honest, because I want to be completely truthful. I didn't experience any shame or guilt. And they sent me for a psychiatric assessment and they diagnosed me with an antisocial personality disorder, close to a psychopath. Yeah. And I wouldn't label myself a psychopath, but I would label myself as someone with, on the low scale end of yeah. the emotions. Yeah. And it's because I've shut them down over yeah. the years of trauma. So I didn't understand remorse, guilt, shame. But in terms of a, a feeling, yeah. to be honest, at the time, I didn't feel anything though. Wow. When you entered prison, did you carry that violence with you or did you want to leave it behind immediately? I, I had a breakthrough moment. I realised that I needed to stop blaming every, everything and everyone around me for why my life was so yeah. tough. And I realised yeah. that if I wanted my life to change, mm. I had to change myself. I've always been very addictive. Right. Um, so I've been addicted to drugs, alcohol, gambling, everything you can think of. Yeah. And somehow, miraculously, I became addicted to kind of like working on myself. Yeah. So I became obsessive with it. Yeah. The library, the free psychiatrist, yeah. the rehabilitation yeah. program, the maths and English lessons, uh, the gym. Yeah. You know, the time to think and like just reflect on myself. Yeah. People that are suffering with so much issues aren't getting seen too quick enough which then ends in them doing stuff like this by putting people in comas. However, when they're in prison and already done their horrible stuff, then they're getting seen to, and it's like, you know, put a plaster on it, make sure they're okay. And it's like, well, they actually are people that need help before it ends in prison. The violence, did that continue through prison? Is there Some of the things that went on were horrible, you know, people were getting stabbed, people were getting, putting tuna cans in socks and getting yeah. smashed around the back of the head or wow. pillowcases over their head and just beating up the foot. Oh. As soon as that door opens in the morning, they rush in, they steal everything and they, yeah. they beat you up. It, it, it can be get very extreme. They even put sugar into a kettle, let yeah. it boil, push it yeah. on your face. Yeah. So they can peel the skin off their face. I mean, it, it's nasty stuff. And, <laughs> Oh my god. The first time you've been yeah. sentenced to prison, yeah. how did that kind of feel? I probably thought it was quite cool. Yeah? Yeah, there was probably a bit of nerves and probably yeah. a little bit of apprehension, but at the yeah. same time it was almost a bit like, yeah, I've gone to prison, my mates yeah. are going to think I'm really cool now. If you went to prison, would you think it would be cool? No. How would you feel? No. Yeah. Embarrassed. Embarrassed? Mm -hmm. How did you become a millionaire? In the early days, all I did was help people and try and help as many people as I could and share awareness as much as I could by sharing my story. That started off as a one-to-one -one thing, but then I hired team members and if you do the right thing at the right time with the right market, things can grow very, very quickly. We now help other people transform their lives and then become life coaches. I've got 5,000 of them. Set me up with a life coach, man. I'm proud of you. Get <laughs> now you've got money. How much money do you have? My business is uh, being officially valued at $25 million. $25 million. But how much did that watch cost? 15000 Guess how much this costs? <laughs> you five, can tell five us. Pounds. <laughs> oh, well done. You're so good. Well done. <laughs> so, how do you feel walking around with materialistic items? Does it make I'm you feel really a bit normally on? a materialistic guy, right? I'm a digital nomad, so I don't have a car or a house. So I what just does that travel. mean? What, you, just, you just fly through a laptop? How, how do you travel to places? I, I own two suitcases, that's all I have. Really? And I will rent cars, I will stay in hotels, and I'll rent villas, and I'll where? decide where I want to go. He thinks yeah, he's I such like a cool person. No, I think it's because of like, something about his journey that he's had. I feel like that's kind of boosted his ego a bit. If I had money, I don't know what I'd spend it on. Probably milkshakes, maybe I, I like shoes, so I'll probably buy shoes. Replace that bracelet. Okay, well you don't have to come for it, we get you a millionaire, <laughs> now you've got a Rolex, but you don't have to, you know, this, you know, it shines a little bit, it's fake, but it shines. I'm gonna say, 